Hello everyone! Welcome to the tutorial for my spring wreath pattern here. Um, if you buy the PDF, you're going to have the directions and, and um, a shopping list to do either version here. If you buy the kit, you're going to have two versions to choose from. Same price. You can get the double hoop version here, where you're going to get, you know, two hoops. Or, if you just want the single hoop version, it's actually going to be 9 inch, not 10 inch. This was just a practice uh, print that I did. But if you just get the regular hoop version, it is going to have the pre-printed design. Um, that's going to be the main difference here. Um, let me just speak about this one real quick. Um, please, to figure out how to hoop this up, check out the Rainbow Roses tutorial. I'll put a link so you can see how that is done. Um, but as far as specifically transferring this design, um, you can see it drawn out here. There's basically three motifs. Um, so, oops, you can see <laughs> the tape is still on them from when I transferred the design. Um, so I'm calling these one, two, and three. I'm gonna stitch this section of bird number one on camera for you today. Um, I think that's a good option because it's kind of a mix between these two. You get to do some of the tummy and then you get these the feathers here too. Um, so I think that's a good combo. That way I don't have to stitch all three on camera. <laughs> that take a long time. Um, so for this one, if you are going to be um, doing the double hoop, you're going to have to transfer the design yourself. I printed this to try to get it to work pre-printed. It just, I can't get the right type of fabric from my printer. So you got to use this linen blend. Um, so what I did is I just taped these on the back, put them up to a bright window. I traced using the Frixion pen, Frixion, I don't know, however you say it. It's a pretty fine point. They're kind of uh, controversial just because the way you get rid of the line is you use like, I like to use a hairdryer because I hate ironing, or you can use an iron. It, you basically any heat will remove the line for you. Um, but there is the concern that like if I was then to put this in the freezer or out in the cold at night, the lines would come back. They're not gone forever when you remove them from heat. So it's kind of like, you know, what's gonna happen long term with this? I don't know. So use with caution. Um, know what you're doing before you go into it. Um, you could also try, if you hate tracing, but really want to do the double hoop, you could always try the printable sticky, what is it, sulky? Oh, it's got the longest name ever. I'll put the link up there too. Basically, you, you would print out the design, cut it out, and it makes stickers. You just put the stickers on here and you can actually just stitch through it. It's not my favorite because it makes this kind of goo. It's hard to get off basically. I don't like it. Um, but those, well those weren't great suggestions, were they? Geez. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I would stick to what, what I just mentioned. But it, you know, it's a complicated design. It's going to take a little while. So give yourself some time and patience. Sit down. Take it easy and just go slow. Um, and also, if you make mistakes when transferring this design, I mean, so what if your flowers don't look exactly like mine? Or if your bird doesn't look exactly like mine? I mean, they don't in the wild, so give yourself a break. That's that. Also, I like to use um, this little pen here. It's, uh, it's disappearing ink, so it makes me feel like a spy. But I like to use it when... Um, just making like notes, I, I guess that's the wrong word, but let's say for the flower here, um, if I wanna mark in where I want my dark color versus my light color, I can do something like this. It's a nice fine tip pen. Um, and same here for the bird, let's say I wanna sketch in, say I want my, my highlight here and I want like a shadow over here. So that's kind of a fun thing I do with my own projects. I just wanted to bring that up real quick. Um, okay. Oh, one more thing about this double wreath, or double hoop, excuse me. Um, one thing was for this one on the back here, where there's this gap in the hoop, I was getting this dent right here, um, 
more so with this one than with the other hoops that I've done. This fabric seems a little more thin. I just, I picked it because I liked this light blue color. Um, so what I ended up doing is using a small craft clamp and I used a tiny um, toothpick and just applied a little bit of glue there. And then I took the clamp and it actually just fit perfectly in here. I think I since tightened it. Oh, there it goes. And then so I clamped that gap closed while the glue dried. Um, and that worked perfectly. So now when it's gone, you can see I don't have that little dent anymore. Alternatively, if you, whoops, if you don't have these clamps, you could apply the glue and then just rotate your hoop so that the hoop acts like a clamp. And then once it's dry, you could shift it back. So that's that if you end up with a little gapiosis like I did. Um, okay, I think that's the housekeeping with transferring and hoop assembly. Um, as far as colors go, I started doing this with my when I was doing my craftsy class because I was having a hard time keeping track of all the different colors. Um, so I just have a spare, you know, these are usually used for keeping all your bobbins in. Um, I had a spare one and I'm kind of using it like a palette to keep track of the color order. And also, you know, with this particular design, I used a lot of stitches with three strands and some with one strand. So you end up with the, these little bits, right? And then they end up everywhere and you can't keep track. So I'm finding if I just put the bits back in, I don't know, it works for me. Um, especially when I have kind of these similar colors. So I found that useful. Um, so first we're gonna, uh, we're just gonna do the flowers. So that's these three colors and the branches. So that's these, that's all we're using right now. Um, and as far as how many strands, like I said, I used three. Part of that was, um, to make it go faster. <laughs> I didn't want to use six cause I didn't want it to be too chunky. Um, I almost used two, but I was like, ah, let's just use three and get this over with. Oops. No, that's not what I meant. Um, you know, it, 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 this is a big piece. It's complicated. I don't know what the heck I was thinking and I wanted, I wanted it to go as fast as I could make it. Um, and also I was hoping that would make it more accessible. Um, I would love to see somebody work this in a single strand. If you do, please send me a picture. I would love to see it. I just didn't have the time to do that. Um, so then what I did is I came back and I did some details with a single strand, um, specifically some of the overlap between the, the black and the white, like some of these these uh, little fluffy feathers here are single strand on top of the head, the little highlight on the eye, um, and then the, the this darkest pink. I also did just, I only used this with a single ply for the French knots and then the shadowing on the buds. Okay, that's enough. So I'm gonna start stitching. Um, okay. <laughs> all I need to say I think so I started with the lightest pink and you'll note that I did not mark on here like where the heck one pink starts and another pink ends uh oh so I <laughs> I said uh oh just now because this fabric I've never used before <laughs> oh my and it's a little bit um thicker your pre-printed fabric will not be this fabric. This was like an experiment. It's actually gonna be um, just the cotton that all my other designs are on. If you've had one of my kits before. This is interesting though, I kinda like it. It's got this texture, I don't know. It's different. I'll let you know later how I feel about it. It's definitely thicker. It's like a linen canvas. I think is what it was called. Okay, so I'm just filling in the top of this flower here. This is supposed to be long and short is what I'm doing. It looks more like I'm just doing satin stitch on the top here, which you could argue is pretty much the same thing. Oops. Little knot situation. Nope, that definitely didn't 
fix it. <laughs> they should have used some thread heaven or something. I usually don't use that stuff, but sometimes it's good to treat treat your threads if you're gonna film. <laughs> okay. So here I'm just filling. Um, okay, so what I was saying about how I didn't mark where the transition should be, um, it's really up to you. I mean, you could see it where I marked it with my purple pen. Um, if you want your flowers to be more of this lighter pink, that make these stitches longer. If you want your flowers to be darker in pink color, then you're gonna want the other ones to be darker. So as I was filling this, you probably noticed I started in the middle and that's to help me figure out which direction I want my stitches to go. It's kind of like a guideline. Um, and then I went down the right and then down the left and that's up to you. That's just personal preference. Um, I have something weird happening right there. What are you? I don't know if it's a fuzzy or what. I'm gonna have to cut that. I don't know what that is. Um, and then like, see, I, I kind of like skipped a little spot here. So I'm gonna sneak a stitch back in here. And just make sure you cover your guidelines. Unless, of course, they are non-permanent. Then, you know, they'll dissolve away. So here I go again, that middle line. I just, I am more consistent with my stitch direction if I just start in the center like that and then go down each side. And like I said, this is supposed to be long and short, so there I give you kind of a longer stitch. <laughs> It, I guess it doesn't look like long and short until you get to your next row. And again, um, there's, there's a lot of room with this design if you want to go fancier, if you want to add in between colors to have the transition even softer here. You know, use a single strand, use extra shades of pink. Oh, and one other thing I forgot to mention, as far as these three motifs, you are not confined to using all three motifs on a nine inch hoop, you know. Um, you could do just a single one. You could do two of them. I think they would look really cool with text in the center here. I have a, a video and tutorial all about lettering, so you can see what I recommend for that. Um, but yeah, there's, you essentially, you're getting three patterns here is what you're getting. Okay, I don't know why I'm still going. I think you probably have the idea. So, um, all these, you know, five petaled flowers are going to be stitched the same way. And then some of these little tiny, like this is also petals, and here these are petals. So those are going to be stitched the same way. Um, so next I'm going to grab the next pink from my tangle of threads and let's see. Oh, it's not too bad back here. <laughs> it's another, another thing when stitching for the camera. Sometimes I neglect my backsides. So I'm just going to anchor in those stitches and hopefully not regret leaving this attached <laughs> that'll come back to bite me okay so I'm gonna come up through the previous stitches here and then just go right down to the center one thing I didn't mention that you know this was a, a test print I just didn't want to waste it that's why I'm stitching on it I put the little um what are these called these little I don't know what those are called um I should have done a little botany lesson before I started my video. Um, the little spiky things in the middle where the pollen hangs out on. Um, originally I was going to put those in and then as I was stitching I was like man those are just going to get lost. Um, so that's what you're seeing on this pattern. Your pattern doesn't have those because I didn't actually bother doing them. <laughs> so 
But you can add them if you want, those little spiky things. I just, I didn't know what color to use. I was just, I was trying to keep it simple. Um, so I just went with the French knots in the center instead. Okay, so there's the center of those. Why, this one only took like three stitches. This one would probably also take three stitches. So this doesn't take very long just to fill those in. Um, and then again, if you want this to be a more smooth transition, you could add another color in between here, or you could use just a single strand of this darker pink. Um, so while I have this on here, I'm gonna show you just these little tiny buds. These are just gonna be like satin stitch, super simple. Probably just three stitches over here. Oh, and I just did the same thing where I did the center to help me figure out which direction I want to go. And then the stitches on either side to finish filling in the shape. I'm going to do this little weird one here because I want to show you that. Same thing. I think for the bird I will use the clamp. Hopefully this isn't too crazy here. That way I'm not moving my hoop around. Sorry if this is unclear at all. Okay, easy peasy. So I'm gonna park here and I'll just show you what I do with the darkest pink. So for this it was just a single strand. Um. I'm using, I think I'm just gonna include size six needles just so it's easier to use the three strands. I'd rather you guys be using too large of a needle than struggle with too small of a needle. Um, so in the center here, I'm just gonna do these little French knots right on top. I wrap twice for these, but depending on how large you want them. Da -da, little French knot. What's an awkward way to hold this? Okay. And then I also use this for like some shading. So I'm just going to come up and add a single stitch here almost like to just kind of outline the edge that's cl like closest to the branch outline the edge that has the stem just like that and then same thing here I'm gonna just add a stitch here and then one here I don't know what these are called. They're just stitches. <laughs> and then I'm gonna do one in the middle too. So just, it's, I don't know what this is called. I guess you could call it, I don't know. I'm just adding some shadows <laughs> with some stitches. So that's that. Okay, now I've got my medium brown, and I'm gonna just show you some of this um, this branch here. So what I did is um, I pretended the sun was up here. So this medium brown is gonna be on the sunny side, and then this darker brown is like our shadow. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, there's some there's some spots on here I had to get kind of creative, but you can see like the upper left is the lighter color and then down below is the, the darker color here. Um, same here near the bottom. Um, here, I, you can see where it kind of got weird, but um, <laughs> you know, I don't think anyone's gonna be coming around like inspecting your work, telling you that you got your shadows wrong. So don't worry too much. Um, so, 
uh, I just did split stitch. Um, and as far as, you know, the order of operation here, um, I, when I did the pattern, I did the flowers first just because they were easiest <laughs> um, and less intimidating than the birds. Um, and I don't know, it's, I always get confused if, like in this case, what should I do first? Should I do this petal because it's on top or should I do the branch because it's on bottom? And I don't know. I still don't have an answer. Some days I think one way is easier. Other days I think another way is easier. So I'm going to do, I guess I'll do traditional split stitch since I'm on camera. Whoa. What happened? I guess everything's okay. <laughs> it's quite a noise pulling that through. Okay. So sometimes I do the back split stitch, right? So you, you would come up ahead of your line and then go back down through your previous stitches because it's, it's easier to see that way. So that's what I usually do. So I'm at like the skinniest part of the branch. Obviously down here, you're gonna have to use more than just one row to fill. But it's the same concept. like so skinny at the top I don't even want to do like two like even one row <laughs> so I'm just kind of spacing them out up here just so I have a little bit of this color this is where you can get artistic I'll show you here so yeah, yeah you can see there's not really much consistency as far as um, you know here I have the stems the dark brown here I did some of both color. Here's the dark brown, here's both colors, both colors. Light color, light color. So from far away, it's just, you can see there's two colors and it adds more depth. So um, if you wanna do it exactly like I did, please see the picture. Otherwise it's just, it's kinda, you know, you can keep with the uh, you know upper left being the light. So I would do this stem light just to give you some kind of rule <laughs> I don't know what rule I was using when I was doing it it was just like whatever felt right at the time <laughs> that rule okay we'll call that good I'll get my dark brown I'm getting a hand cramp oops sorry sorry about the wobbles Here I'm gonna do, I'll do this little stem while we're here. Oof. Oh my gosh. So I needle am I using here? <laughs> That's that weird fabric I'm using right now. It sounds like a drum. <laughs> Don't stitch on this fabric in church, my goodness. Okay, I don't think I'll be using this in the future. <laughs> Too noisy. Noisy fabric. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, where am I? So I'm just gonna come up 
Those were the stems. I don't know what kind of stitches those are. They're just easy little single stitches, straight stitches. They're too short to bother with any uh, split stitch, I think. Okay. So I'm just following along, doing the dark side of the branch here. <laughs> And then for here, I got a stem. And a knot. And then here I'm just gonna do, um, I'm gonna fill this with satin stitch. <laughs> What's going on here, Floss? I recently started doing some cross stitch and there, I think there's something weird about the way I do it because I think I'm like twisting my floss because I'm getting those little knots all the time to the point where it's not a good time. I'm just in like knot city. So if you want on these I still haven't figured out what these are called. These little protective, they're like, they're kind of like leaves, but they, they look more waxy. Anyways, this is what the bud comes out of, right? The flower bud. Um, if you want to give these dimension, you're more than welcome to add a couple of stitches of the lighter color to give them a highlight. Or not. Okay, and then I just keep going up. The stem's kind of longer, so it's up to you if you want to do like a back stitch on this longer stem, or you could actually do a split stitch because that's what the directions say. Sometimes I just want my directions to say, you know, just stitch it. I don't think anyone would buy that. <laughs> I think I'd get a lot of emails. <laughs> okay. I have like a little hole right here. I'm gonna fill in. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm going to switch to my bird colors. I'll get clamped up and I'll show you how to stitch this bird. All right. So I actually went ahead and finished the branch and the flowers just because it looks better this way finish. Um, and I changed my hoop. The reason I did that is because I I put my work on the um, the stand here. Uh, I get a lot of questions about these stands. I really only use them for filming because I just haven't gotten around to uh, getting used to how they feel. I don't know, I like to be able to move my hoop back and forth, change the direction so it's easier on my wrist when I stitch. So um, uh, this is just like a generic, I think it's Edmunds brand. It's it's okay. Like right now I have it secured to a table and I have weights on the bottom to kind of try to minimize the wibble wobble. There's still wibble wobble though. Um, that's the technical term. Uh, so I don't know. I have, there's probably better ones out there. I just, this is what my husband bought me for Christmas and uh, I, I think it's just what they had at the store. <laughs> so if you're looking for a recommendation, go somewhere else. Um, Okay, and then, oh, and also about the hoop, I just wanted to mention, you know, you don't have to do this stitching in a smaller hoop. Um, uh, you can, though, if you want to transfer, um, if you find it easier, if you find you can get better tension in a smaller hoop, please do that. Make sure you take the, the fabric out of the hoop at night so you don't get permanent creases. Um, alternatively, if you want to keep your work in a larger hoop, like the 9-inch hoop, but you're having problems with tension, you could always bind the hoop or just 
slip an extra layer of fabric here. Um, that's what I usually do because it's less work than binding. Um, just to add a little more thickness to give the hoops some more uh, uh, thickness to, to grip. So, all right, let's get going. So here we are, we're doing this birdie here. Um, so I'm gonna start at the tail because everything kind of builds up on that. So we kind of have a few basic pieces to our, our birds. So we're gonna do the tail first, then we're gonna move on to these um, wing feathers. Then we'll do these upper wing feathers. The body, we'll probably actually do the feet before the body. Um, and then there's these upper uh, back feathers and then the head. Um, it's kind of like what builds on top of what, like, I don't know, I'm just contradicting myself, but uh, for example, these feathers overlap the wing feathers. So I do these feathers after so I can have overlap. Okay, same with the head. I want these head feathers to be on top of the back feathers. So I do did those after I did this section. Um, here it's like, I did the body after, because it doesn't really matter. I don't really have overlap. I just have like a, a line here. There's no, um, you know, there's no overlap of feathers there. <laughs> I can only say that so many different ways. <laughs> so um, that's a little bit of, of the uh, order of operations. So I'm going to start on the tail with some black. And I'm going to do it with some long and short stitch. I do want to show you for... Um, I can sneak this back in here. What the heck am I running into? Okay. Um, for this birdie, this is bird number two, you can see the tail feathers over here. I actually did like back stitch to fill um, before I realized that that's not what I wanted to do. It's an option though, but you can see you can see the texture there more, which I decided isn't what I wanted. I didn't bother pulling them out, but it's kind of a learning experience there. So here on these feathers, you can see they're more smooth. You don't see those little brick shapes of my back stitch. It's because I did long and short stitch instead. So let's do that. So I kind of did it. Let's see. Where's my little pen? Here we go. So basically we have a color gradation over here where it's, their tails are black and kind of gray. So I'm going to do a big chunk of black and then the dark gray and then the light gray. So that line is just going to give me a little bit of information there. Um, so here we go. So I'm going to make a, a bigger stitch. And basically what it turns into is like a really long split stitch to fill. Let's see. Get a little bit better autofocus going here. I wonder if I'm too close. I was hoping we would have less wobble with me hooked up like this, but now that we're so close, I'm afraid you're still gonna get car sick. Don't want that. There's my first row. It looks it looks awful. So don't judge it right now. You just keep going. So I'm doing rows at a er is this is this a row? I guess it's a column. I'm going up and down. Um I'm doing columns, but you can do rows. That way you don't have to carry so far. Okay, I'm gonna back up the camera because I'm afraid. I'm afraid for you all. All right, I hope this helps. I think maybe the next time I do a tutorial, I'll try using like a like a vise. Just forget about this silly hoop stand. Okay. So I'm gonna go back down. I'm just filling in this space. If you want to fill this space in with a different stitch, if 
you want to do it with backstitch like I was doing it before, I'm basically doing it with rows of split stitch. I'm calling it long and short stitch because it's kind of what long and short stitch is, right? Um, but I'm doing it back and forth. Hopefully that's not the most confusing thing you've ever seen. It's because the shape I'm filling is very long, so I feel silly doing it in rows. You're just gonna fill it. Don't let any background see. Luckily it's black, so you can't actually tell what kind of stitch I'm using. I find this the hardest part of doing patterns is like, trying to figure out what stitch I'm using. <laughs> it's like, um, depends on your definitions. And I'm not using it in a traditional way. But do what you need to do to fill in this space with black. Make it smooth. Okay. So I'm going to say this is pretty good here. Um, and I think while I have the black on my needle. I'm going to jump around a little bit simply because I don't want to make a big mess on the back. So I'm going to jump up to the head. Even though I told you guys not to do that. Um, I'll do the eye real quick. We're just going to do two layers of satin stitch to make a powdered satin stitch and then start building in some feathers here on the top of the head and the chin. So I'm going to go up and down first for the eye. And the reason I do padded is just to make it stand out a little bit more from the head. We're going to come back later and outline it so we can see it even better. This will make that even easier for us. Well, that's ugly. That's okay. We're just going to cover it. So that was our padding, and then here's our satin stitch on top. Ta -da. Oh, let's do the beak. <laughs> I clearly know what I'm doing, guys. Okay, the beak is also satin stitch. Oops, I keep coming up in the middle of it. But if you do that, that's fine too. The nice part about black, it's, you can't really see what the heck you did. <laughs> as long as you cover up your background fabric, you're all good. Okay, there's the beak, easy peasy, and then for the feathers, these are in this direction here, boop, boop. and then on the head, they're like this, same with the whole head here, and then on the back, they're like this, tummy, they're like that, so... That's why I like these pens to kind of do the thinking for me. So I'm going to start at the corner here and just work some feathers in here. Just a bunch of tiny stitches. Um, you know, with long and short, you're supposed to technically come up through, but I'm not too worried. Sorry, let me finish that sentence. You're supposed to come up through your previous stitches versus which, what I'm doing is I'm actually going down on them, mostly because I just can't see that far right now. <laughs> um, but it, I don't think it matters with these feather stitches because I'm trying to make texture. Um, if you wanted your long and short stitch to be more smooth, you'd want to come up in between the previous stitches, like what I did with the flowers, how I came up with the darker pink um, 
We came up through the previous stitches of the lighter pink. So here I'm kind of trying to show you that again. I come up through the previous. Here, you, oops, there's a little knot. You can see it's just, I'm just filling, you know? It's kind of just all crazy wonky stitches. If you want to outline it first and then fill it in or just work from one end to the other like I'm doing. Okay, I'm almost out of this thread, which is a good place to stop. So we'll go back to the tail and <laughs> back to where we started before I got distracted. Um, and we're going to just add kind of what we have here is like a, a highlight, I guess you could call it. So it's the, the next, it's the darkest gray is what it is. So I'm just going to do it like a, another column here. So what we're seeing here is it's, this, I, I don't know if their tails are black or just a really dark gray, but we're seeing like a little bit of light come through on the side here. So here I'll come up through. Hey, I guess this is just split stitch, or columns of split stitch, we'll call it. thickness here. Okay, I'm gonna park this needle this time and move on to the next gray, which is the middle gray. If I can find it on my pin cushion here. I prepped all these needles and then my cat found it. <laughs> and yeah, it was a mess. Okay. Thickness here. Okay. I'm going to park this needle this time and move on to the next gray. Which is the middle gray. If I can find it on my pin cushion here. I prepped all these needles and then my cat found it. <laughs> and yeah, it was a mess. Okay. Okay, I just finished up that line of the medium gray and I'm gonna actually do these feet while I have the gray on my needle. 
So, I don't know what to call this stitch, you guys. We'll call it split stitch. <laughs> Fill in the feet with gray, using whatever you feel like it. You can do back stitch. I try to do satin stitch. The shapes are so tiny. Finished those feet up. Now I have the lightest gray, and I'm gonna use this to do some split stitch stripes on the wings. So basically, those lines that you see there, you're just gonna cover them up with some split stitch. Uh, if you would like to add more lines, you can. I just I was trying to I was trying to simplify it. Um, this is the same thing you're going to do for bird number three, where you see the back. Same thing. So now that those lines are done, I'm going to fill in the gaps with that dark gray. It's, whoa, pulling up some, some uglies. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to just fill in here. Same thing. We'll call it Rosa Split Stitch. It's just, I like this part because it's like, I, I'm just filling in the gaps. Nice and easy. See, I'm changing direction here. I'm just going back. You can keep your splits in the same direction if you want. Again, with this, um, these darker colors, it kind of hides the texture. Okay, all filled in, so now I'm going to do some satin stitch on these like upper wing feathers, these shorter wing feathers. These two little sections here are quite small, so we can just do some satin stitch. Also, I wanted to point out, I don't know if you noticed that my guidelines I kind of sketched in for stitch direction for the long and short tiny feathers on the body and the head. They're almost gone. That could be a selling point for you or not. <laughs> uh, depending on where you live, you know, those lines might stick around a little longer. Um, I am in, I'm near Seattle, Washington. Uh, it's notoriously wet here so um, humidity is definitely a factor. I like to stitch down into previous stitches like you can see how I'm doing here rather than coming up through where my previous stitches went down I'm always afraid I'll, I'll bring up I don't know, I don't want to mess with the Sasquatch. Like, if those stitches are fine, I don't want to, I don't want to mess with them. Although I'll have to because I did this section first. I should have done that lower section first. 
because now when I do that lower section, I'll have this little spot here where I'll have to come up through the bottom of these. That's okay. I'll survive this one time. Okay, now I am going to start filling in the body with this tan color. I'm going to leave this section over here blank, and I'm also going to fill in the back feathers the same way, but I'm going to leave this little bit blank too. Um, so for that, I'm going gonna, gonna to start up here. and just start getting some little stitches in like I was doing with the head. The crazier you make your angles here, the more fluffy, scruffy your bird is going to look. Um, it can either look cute and fluffy or uh, scruffy. <laughs> There's a good in-between scruffiness and also stitch length. I'm probably making these stitches a little long. I think the most important thing though when doing this is just getting good coverage. Luckily our background color here of our fabric is, you know, it's not a crazy bright color. It's it's pretty neutral as far as a blue would go and light in color, so um, it won't be horribly glaring, but sometimes I'll use a finger and kind of push up the fabric behind to kind of look for little bald spots, you know? It's kind of a good way to check that you're getting good coverage. I think that's the most important part. You know, angle and length's important, but... Um, you could have all of that and still have holes in your embroidery and that's that's gonna look way worse. <laughs> Am I using the right color? I think so. Hopefully. So I'm gonna keep filling this in and I'll do the top part too and then uh, meet you back for the next colors. So I filled in, I filled in this patch, I filled in this patch, I went ahead and just I finished filling in the white up here and the black up here. Um, I ended up having to put on a thimble because <laughs> my hands are tired now. Uh, There's a lot of stitches. Um, that's what thread painting is. Lots and lots of stitches. So, um, uh, and I'm glad I don't always use this thick fabric. It's a little more painful. <laughs> okay, so let's move on. We're almost done. We're in the home, home stretch. Just readjusting here real quick making sure okay so I I just finished the white so I'm gonna add a little white patch here one thing I wanted to mention um uh you know when I when I started up here I started up here and I went down but you could also go the opposite way like start down here and go up um probably makes more sense to do that um because if you think about how the feathers are you know the the top ones are laying on top of the bottom ones so it would make sense to do the bottom ones first so but you can see I believe that's how I did this one um I don't know is there a difference you know in this case because I'm I want that texture I'm not sure it makes that much of a difference but if you want to be like perfect there you go okay so I'm gonna Add some stitches over here in white, like this. I'm leaving a little gap because there's another color I'm going to add to help blend. And I'm also, I don't need to make too many puffy stitches beyond my guideline here. Just cover your guideline. We're going to use a single strand of white to kind of add a little bit more texture on the edge. That was weird. I kind of created a little hole. Let's fill that in. Nice and random little feathers here. 
can see there's lots of overlap between them to make sure I don't have any background showing and there's really no rhyme or reason to how they go. Uh, this bird versus the first time I did it, I even have like a little bit of a difference in my stitch directions. Um, I don't know. So I, I don't always like that question. Which What's the stitch direction? Like, uh, it depends on which time I did it. it. Depends on how you want your stitches to look. I don't know. For, for this, I just look at a bird. You know, look at a picture of a chickadee and say, which um, what direction do the feathers go? That's what we're trying to mimic here. Okay, so here's my little in-between color. I'm just going to blend there. Start at the bottom here. Oh, and also, I think, you know, some of these little feathers can go overlapping this branch a little bit. So this is, like, their tummies are white, but then, like, kind of the back of their bodies are with this more tan color, so... We have, a, we, we have a bit of a highlight that we're doing here, but it's also just a change in color of the feathers. But basically what it does is it helps this round body look more round. That's my favorite part of these birds. That just adorable plump body. They're so dang cute. So that's that color, and then we'll go to the darker color. Okay, so now I'm back. I'm using the same color brown we used on the branches, and I'm just going to add a little bit of shadow over here. So if like I was talking about, as far as if you want to do the bottom feathers first, then you'd probably want to start with this color. And then do the tan on top. So bird number two has, uh, you do pretty much the front of the body and kind of the side. So there's also a little bit of a gray shadow you're going to add. It's the same thing. You're just kind of adding some extra colors to get that shadow, get some dimension. So I'll pretend like this is kind of a little bit of shadow from those wings. And you can see, in this case, I'm just going directly on top of my previous stitches versus when I did the white, I kind of left it blank. Um, is there a right way or a wrong way? Probably. I don't know. See how it looks on mine if you can tell a difference, if you prefer one over the other. Um, going on top is going to make more texture versus, you know, leaving a space and filling it in with the other color will uh, have less. So there you go. Lots of room to do your own thing here. Okay. Okay, for the top of the back, I mixed some threads. So what I did is I used two strands of our kind of brown gray and one strand of the tan because uh, the top of the back here um, it's a little bit lighter on the birds and I kind of wanted to give a bit of a highlight 
Um, again, you know, the more colors you use, the more realistic your animal, your thread painting is going to be. Um, so this is just kind of a way to pretend to add an extra color. <laughs> I didn't want to have to add another color to our shopping list, so then it might be kind of fun to do this instead. So, you know, of course you could just do these separate if you want to, just fill in the hole back with that gray-brown and then come in with a single strand of the tan to kind of add a couple little highlights. But it's kind of fun to mix them on your needle. So I want to make sure I do not overlap my white stitches. I'm going to come in with a single strand of white to do a couple detail uh, little feathers that will overlap this section I'm doing right now. Which will help with the three-dimensional look. But so I'm just kind of coming up right to the edge of that white and not overlapping. Same with this black. Take the rest of the day off oh, of stitching, my goodness. It's alright, I gotta write up the pattern, so <laughs> I should take the rest of the day off stitching. So you can see it just adds a little a little bit of brightness at the edge there. Okay, now I have a single strand of our dark gray. We're gonna do some details with um with this. We're gonna actually do back stitch around the eye. My light is fading here. Hopefully I don't make too much of a mess of this. actually kind of doing this by feel it's like it's darker in here than it looks on my uh, my camera so I'm just kind of feeling where because <laughs> it's that double layer of stitches where the eye is so I'm kind of working around that <laughs> make sure you have good lighting when you're doing this guys Okay, there's my outline of the eye and then I'm gonna add a, just a couple strands on the beak here just to give the Beak a little bit more dimension. I don't want a really bright highlight, but just just a, a little more color. Can you hear that? What is that? Someone's doing some work in the neighborhood. Okay, and then what I did is I, since I had extra uh, gray still, I I just did a kind of a backstitch outline here, just to make it pop a little bit more. I like how that looks a little more definition okay so then we'll come in let's see let's do let's do the white okay so here's my white I'm gonna do the highlight of the eye I'm a big fan of upper right corner if 
for that as just the single stitch kind of helps eyes come alive oh he kind of looks angry I like it <laughs> um, and then I'm gonna let's see let's do the chest first because that's easier I'm gonna add a couple of little swoops what have I grabbed? I grabbed some. I have a little knot back here because I didn't anchor. Oh yeah, look at that. That's cute. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to add some little fluffy little feather stitches here. And then same thing over here where the feathers on the head, on the side of the face, and I overlap the body. Just add a couple, a couple stitches here so we can pretend like we did the whole thing in a single strand. Filling in a weird gap there. I'm doing some a little bit more perpendicular and then yeah, some more diagonal. And here I am doing my stitch from the bottom up instead of the top down. Can't really see a difference. I'm covering up something here. It's weird. Okay, on the edge here, just add in a little a couple detail stitches. Oops, I lost my um I, I lost my eye highlight. What the heck happened? When I got tangled, I must have pulled my thread out. I wonder what I'm anchored on now. That's fascinating. Fascinating. So I don't, I don't really like the these clamps because it's. I find it difficult to anchor my threads. There, you can loosen your um, your bolt and do it, but like that's a pain. <laughs> or you can like flip, contort your body upside down so you can see what's going on down there. And I'm always doing a bad job of anchoring. Okay, there's our highlight. Okay, and then black. We're almost done! Okay, so here's my black. We're gonna do pretty much just what we did with the, with the white. You're gonna kinda come on the edges like that to kinda give them a mohawk. Oh, you know what, I forgot. I also added a couple strands of that dark gray up here as a really subtle highlight. Um, I just didn't do that, but please do that. Here, let's see. Can you see them on there? They're really super subtle. Uh, but once again, it's just another place to do some detail. But what I do want to show you is I actually did a little bit of outline on the, on the feet with the black in a single strand just kind of with yeah, like a back stitch outline on the bottom the shadow side so kind of the same rule as what we did with the uh, the branches there so. that just helps those pop out a little bit more you could also use the dark gray I think I tried the dark gray and it wasn't it was kind of hard to see, so I went with the black instead. Okay. So that's it. I'm going to do both feet and do those little other details, but that's, that's it. So please let me know if you have any questions. Um, hoping that by doing this one bird, I've given you the tools 
you need to do the other two. Um, if I get enough uh, <laughs> requests, I can always do another one. I'm hoping there aren't enough requests. <laughs> but I am definitely happy to answer questions. So, uh, you know, leave me a comment, send me an email. Yeah, and have fun, okay? Okay. <laughs>